another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Truly an honor, we have Wing Commander Andy Green, the fastest man in the world. What is the official number for the record book? Current record stands at 763 miles an hour. That's just a little bit over the speed of sound. So right. we hold the supersonic world record. And the supersonic record. record as well. And you're going for 1,000 miles an hour. Yes, sir. We're building the Bloodhound supersonic car with, uh, with two interesting aims. The first of, one is, first of which is fairly outrageous. We're trying to actually build and run a 1,000 mile an hour car. What's actually, frankly, more ambitious and makes me more nervous, because it's the thing I understand least about, is we're trying to create this um, education legacy for a whole generation of kids to get them into science and technology. Right. So we're running this huge education program on the back of it and getting, doing it all in public. We're exposing all the trials we're doing, all the tests, all the development. So every time we make a mistake, there's a million people out there marking all our homework. I know. But actually, the following is fantastic. The kids are fantastic, and you know, it's going really well. So that's the exciting thing. No, I think it's great, because we were talking earlier about uh, Craig Breedlove and some of the other men that went for the speed record. And a lot of these guys did it in their home garage, in their backyard, working on weekends part time. There wasn't as much science and technology. It was real sort of seat of your pants hot riding. But like you say, once you're over 600 miles an hour, then <laughs> that's when the science and the technology really comes into play. Isn't it? All of a sudden, the requirement for precision starts yeah. to become just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, go back to 1997 when we were going supersonic. You know, one degree too much nose, nose down, and we finish up with 10 tons of download on wow. the car, and you, get, you crush it, which from a driver's point of view, that's not a good thing. Yeah. One degree too much nose up, you finish up generating over 10 tons of lift, car pitches up, you hit about 40, 40 G at this stage, bodywork tears off, engines tear out the bottom of the, uh, wow. the car, and that's gonna spoil my afternoon. Yeah. So, so that, that precision, uh, and that's, that was for 750. To do 1,000, it's way more complicated still. I know, so I know. A, a friend of mine who races uh, Vincent motorcycles, he was at Bonneville, he went 240, and he got a cramp and he went like that, lift his finger and wham, it just pulled his, and he it's went up, down. Yeah. And so at a thousand miles an hour, I can't imagine. Now, but you're also setting a sort of luxury speed record as well with Bentley as well. I, I find this fascinating. In, in a lot of ways, it, it's more accessible to the average guy. You're taking a basically stock Bentley. What, what speed did you attain, attain with this? Uh, when we got out to, uh, to Bonneville and we were making this little film about the, uh, the future of speed, I right. said, it'll do 180 something. And I went, yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. So I'm, th you know, I'm managing the expectations. We might get it up to 170 ish because you know, you've been to the salt. You know, sure. it's, it's quite slippery. It's, you know, it's like wet tarmac, which right. at 150 plus is, is quite exciting. Got this car out. All they did was they drove it to the salt, put an extra 10 pounds of, uh, of air in the tires. This is a standard road car, and we're running it flat out down the Bonneville salt flats. And it gets up to 170, 75, 180, it's still accelerating, 185. I'm now looking at the numbers. Are you sure? We get up to 191 <laughs> miles an hour. And it's yeah. just sitting there. And, and now I'm talking to the camera, doing the interview, 190 miles an hour. Yeah. So it was great. And the amazing thing is, as you said, it's a totally stock car. Yeah. In fact, it's that one right there, isn't it, if I'm not mistaken? It is that That's one right. That's the actual car. So it's not as if... Uh, you did suspension changes and the high speed, the you know tires or anything. It's it's just a basic road car. That is uh, that is pretty unbelievable. Check, check underneath, you'll find some salt still in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, and that's what Bentley was all about. It, you know, as a kid, I always loved the W O Bentleys because they were about racing, but luxury as well. They were luxury cars that were fast and handled. They were the exact opposite of some of the more fragile cars like Bugatti. They were heavy cars that could take a pounding and go 24 hours. And just yeah. the fact you could drive this with everybody in it to the salt flax, get out of the car, go 191 and then go back home. That's, that's <laughs> that had to be the easiest record. Not a lot of training involved there for that one, was there? Well, not a lot, but at yeah. the same, you know, the, the, the technique and the experience helps. Because yeah. uh, we, we had, uh, you know, one, one of the senior Bentley guys there as well, who by day two said, I've got to have a go at this. Yeah. He never actually quite got the car to 190, which I think was annoying him quite a lot. Yeah. But the practice helps. So what is the trick to getting a road car like this to 190? Uh, you mentioned the salt being slippery. Do you feel the wheels starting to, do they move underneath you yeah. at that speed? 
uh, initially, when you're pulling away, you get, uh, it, you've still got uh, what's called quite a lot of tyre cornering stiffness, so the lateral grip, mm -hmm. that goes down with speed. So to start with, you've got a lot of grip at the front end, um, and uh, it, as you start to spin up the back wheels, obviously the traction control's working hard, right. but nonetheless it's a slippery surface. So the car's moving around a little bit at the back end. Okay. And the trick is just to not fight, just to let it do that. The car right. is very good at sorting itself out. A little bit of correction, but not starting to fight it. As it starts to get faster, then the front end starts to move around as well, because right. now the, the front end is getting looser the faster you're going. Of course, the back end is still working hard because the aerodynamic drag on this car is fairly huge. Right. So is the power. So you're squeezing the car. You've got the, uh, the drag at the front end, you know, this huge push from, uh, uh, from this huge engine it's got at, uh, at the back end. So the car is, is moving around at both ends. And again, the trick is just to let it do that because it's been very well designed which is quite an odd experience at 150, 60, yeah. 170 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, uh, once you get used to it, then, uh, and it uh, literally, it took me you know, all of about five minutes to, to get used to it and to get to trust the car. And all of a sudden, you, this car was designed to do this. It is perfectly safe. Right. So you don't turn off the traction control or anything of that nature when you go under the flats, do you? If you were record setting, you'd turn it off because you actually want slightly more wheel spin for the optimum acceleration on the salt right. than the traction control will give you. But give or take a couple of miles an hour, um, the traction control will do the job for you. And how many miles did it take you to hit the 191? On the uh, that was four miles. Oh, okay. So it was, uh, it, we, we, uh, we actually had a six mile track, so it's uh, by, by mile three, you're doing just over 180. Right. The next mile goes from a sort of uh, 183, 184, up to the 190, 191, then you need about a mile and a half to slow down yeah. again. Now tell me about stopping on the salt. Is it, uh, it's not like stopping on pavement, is it? Um, or do you feel, or do you start to, uh, do you feel the traction control, uh, the, the ABS rather grabbing you? Or, I mean, do you slide on the salt? What happens there? If you, if you work the brakes hard, then you will. The, the problem with stopping, uh, and I didn't want to wear the car out early, the problem with using the brakes from 180 miles an hour is you'll put so much heat into them, you'll start to heat the tires up. Right. And, uh, and the tires are the weak point at, uh, at high speed. So I'm very much, the reason I wanted a mile and a half to slow down is you actually let the, uh, the aerodynamics slow the car down for about right. the first mile and then you use the brakes for the last half a mile. You don't cook the brakes, you don't cook the tires and the car's then ready to go again. So you keep the wheels cool. Because I took the Porsche to uh, Talladega and I was coming down the back straight 188 and the guy went like this and I just lifted off and the thing just spun on me. Just that because I realized I should have gotten off it very yep. slowly. You've when you say careful. let the aerodynamics slow the car, are you taking your foot off the gas or just slowly bringing your foot back? It, yeah, it's a, it's a slow lift. Right. At those sort of speeds, you don't want to do anything sudden because it will right. destabilize the car. The, the, the dynamic balance of the car is quite important and you will change it. And at what speed did you touch the brakes? Uh, the fastest I tried them, again, just in, for, you know, did I need an emergency stop? I, I actually tried them at about 160. Right. They're absolutely fine, but you can see the tire temperature start to come up almost immediately. Right, yeah. Now, yes. compare that to driving uh, the, the jet car. What, I, I can't imagine, because it's not going through the wheels, it's just thrust. So how, do you, how are you controlling that? Well, we've got, uh, you've got two problems with the jet cars. Or, or, for Bloodhound, it's a jet and a rocket. It's first of all, to get it up to speed. Right. And the second thing is to slow it down again. Right. Because you've got this very heavy, very, uh, very slippery vehicle. We've got a 12 mile track. From a standing start, the car is going to be at the other end of the 12 miles in two minutes. Right. So wow. the first minute's acceleration. Right. Um, I'll start off with a jet engine, and that's right foot controlling uh, nine tons of thrust, about 60,000 thrust horsepower. It's the, uh, the Eurofighter EJ200. Right. Uh, so that that's accelerates the car up to about 300 miles an hour, leaving that flat out, and then I start the wind-up process for the rocket, which is a two-stage process, and that's on triggers on the steering wheel. The rocket's uh, it's actually pumping liquid into the rocket, so we're actually using a Cosworth Formula One engine as the pump motor. I got you, yeah. Because we need 800 horsepower just yeah, to turn sure, the pump. Yeah, sure, that's yes. a fuel pump. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that's 12 tons of thrust, so that's about 75,000 thrust horsepower wow. to add to the 60,000 yeah. I've got. And that's the bit where the car starts accelerating at 45 miles an hour per second, um, and we'll do 350 to 1,000 in the 20 seconds. Wow. Measured mile takes three and a half seconds. At that point, shut down both the jet and the rocket, and, and that's the bit where you shut them down in sequence. Don't shut them down both together because of a big lurch sure, in the car. Sure. 
So shut the jet off, sorry, shut the rocket off immediately, jet intake still pulling air in, and then as you throttle that back gently, you gradually change the airflow over the back of the car. Now the car is slowing down at 3G, 60 miles an hour per second, just with the aerodynamic drag. Right. Okay. So that's, that's the equivalent of 60 miles an hour to zero in one second. Wow. Which if you did that in a road car, that would qualify as a crash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly yeah. violent experience. Get down below 700 miles an hour, now the drag is coming off, so we need more aerodynamic drag. Right. So we're looking at air brakes and or parachutes. Um, either will stop the car, so there's a lot of redundancy in there, because this bit, getting the car stopped before the end of the track, this bit's compulsory. Right. I need to get this bit right. 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 Um, and then uh, the, the air brakes, parachute if we need it, and then we've got wheel brakes from about 150, 200 miles an hour to stop the car, ideally right at the end of the track. So right. the last little bit, I'll just coast to a halt. Full lock, it's a uh, 250 meter, what's that, about an 800 foot uh, turning circle. Right, right. That sounds like a lot. On a 12 mile track, actually 800 foot's not very yeah. much. So drive it around in a big circle, lets the engine cool down, point it the other way, so we're now ready to refuel, rearm the car, because we're going to get back through the timing lights within one hour. Right, that's amazing. What was scarier, the first time in a fighter jet or the first time in the jet car? I think they, they're both mentally challenging in different yeah. ways. The first time I drove a full-size jet fighter, the, uh, the F4 Phantom, yeah. uh, terrified me. Yeah. 20 tons of screaming death yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. With, with an instructor in the back who was going, no, you're doing that wrong, no, you're doing that wrong. I'm right. trying really hard. Uh, get into, uh, the, and, and of course, the thing about a jet fighter is you have to commit to airborne. Right. And once you're there, you have to fly it until you can get it back on the runway. Right, right, sure. With a car, you can do it gradually. You can go a little bit faster each time. So you can do your first run, 30 miles an hour. Sure. Your second run, 60 miles an hour. Yeah. So it's much more progressive. But no instructor in the back on that no, one. No, it, it's, it's a teach yourself experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, first time supersonic, that's a bit different because there is not only nobody to teach you, right. no one's ever done this before. So that was a, a, an interesting moment because the, uh, the previous car was quite unstable getting supersonic. Right. 90 degrees of steering lock. Um, 50 feet offline with the car sliding sideways, and I'm actually steering it on the throttle at, uh, on a wow. couple of the runs just to actually keep the car balanced. Now, do you feel that, do you hear the sonic boom on the ground? No, here's the disappointing thing. Yeah. I'm the only person in the world who's never been able to hear a sonic boom from a car because <laughs> I'm making it. <laughs> right, it's, right. It's a bit like the, uh, the bow wave from a speedboat. Okay. You know, if, you're, if you're whizzing across sure. a nice flat piece of water and you're throwing out a bow wave, you will never feel that bow wave. Right. Now, you go past the guy in his fishing dinghy and swamp him, turn him over, yeah. he feels it. Yeah. Same thing with a shockwave. You, know, uh, you, you will hear the boom as it passes you. Never passes me, I can't yeah. hear it. Do you know that you've broken it, or you only know that after you've gone back and they tell you? I've got uh, a, a very accurate speedometer that I'm watching very, very closely, okay. because each run is to but a But nothing happens. Speed. But no, in terms of handling, you can't tell. It's purely, I see it right. on the, the needle, I know exactly how fast as a number, but you can't tell otherwise. And it changes, doesn't it? What varies the speed of sound when you're on the Very, very simply, temperature. Okay. It's the only significant thing that changes okay. the, uh, the speed of sound. And, and it does change a lot. It changes, uh, what is it, uh, five uh, miles an hour for every three degrees. Oh, is that right? So okay. you know, in, a, in a 20 degree centigrade change during the day, you're going to get 35 mile an hour change in the speed of sound. It's a yeah. big change. So is the next goal, because I know you're a competitive guy, do you say to yourself, I've got to take that over 200. I've got to take the standard GT over 200. Uh, I've got to go 225. I mean, is, do you look at it that way, or is it, or is it just it does what it does? It's, it would be great fun to take, tweak the Bentley a little bit, yeah, uh -huh, or, or, or better still, to take the, uh, the GT. Take the GT3 to Bonneville and find out how fast that will Yeah, be. that would be interesting. That's, yeah. that's, that, I think, would be the car to take. Yeah, yeah, because this is, yeah, the GT3 would be good to yeah. do. Well, it's really fascinating, and uh, th this film is available. Anyway, you can get it on, it's on YouTube, correct? The, the, uh, the Bentley film? Yeah, absolutely. It's just, just been launched, and uh, it, it's, it, it was a real thrill going to Bonneville to do that, because it's such a beautiful place yeah. to film and certainly to film a car like this. Uh, we, we really enjoyed making that film, uh, and, it, and it was really interesting just to consider what is the future of speed? What right. are the challenges we're gonna have in the future? And doing it in an interview at 190 miles an hour, there's not many places in the world Well, that's what it. I find fascinating also, you know, it's a bit like the supersonic and the F1 stuff is a little beyond my comprehension, so when, when the road cars that I can see and touch and feel, 
that makes it real for me. I mean, I found this fascinating. I found the film fascinating. Just the fact that you're talking and you're running at 190 and you see those, you know. It's like when you're a kid. I remember I was six years old, the first time I saw the clock hit 12 o'clock. I went, oh my God, at night. Oh, the yeah. two numbers hit, oh, they seem fascinating to me. So to see that speedometer to go to 191 in a, in a road car Bentley is, is pretty amazing. Thank That's you, Wing Commander. Fun. A pleasure. Jay, thank, thank you. you very much. I was thrilled to have you. It's truly an honor to have you here at the garage. It's, it's been a real privilege to be a here. A lot of fun. Thank you. And check out that video.